second time around is so much faster. So the tub was ready for me to get in as soon as we broke my water because I already knew that when we would break my waters, I'd want to get in there. And I was not wrong. I looked over and there was Cloyd standing right here and Chad was right here and he put his arm out and he said, you're okay, mommy. Such a beautiful moment to have my two-year-old there with me. I've been up since 3.30 this morning and I can't decide if I'm having Braxton Hicks or contractions because I didn't really have Braxton Hicks my first time. These are very consistent since 3.30 till it's like 6.30 a.m. right now. They've been every like 10 minutes and they're pretty uncomfortable but like they're bearable so it's not like it's super serious. I sent Chad to work and it's just me and Floyd. He's watching Bluey right now. House phone's ringing. I just got off the phone with the midwife and she said that she thinks that they are definitely contractions and this is early labor. But now that Floyd is awake and I'm functioning, there's like a possibility that it could slow down and then pick back up. But she said it won't stop because they are true contractions, not Braxton Hicks, based on how low they are and like what they feel like. I'm going to wait for my birth team to wake up and I'm going to start contacting people and probably get ready to go to the house where I'm going to be having my home birth. I gotta feed this chihuahua. She's getting angry at me. Okay, let's see how well I function for a little while. It's 10.30 now. My contractions are very consistent and regular. It's about like every 10 minutes. There's been a few that have been a little bit stronger than maybe some other ones, but I've just been laying on the couch with Floyd, chilling, and it's been really nice, actually. We are gonna get ready to go as soon as Chad gets here, probably in the next 30 minutes. I was thinking about Floyd going to go have a play date, but I'm like really emotional about him leaving. Just probably because they got a lot of hormones happening right now, so I don't want him to go nowhere. I think maybe he'll just stay with us. We're all really sick still. You can probably hear I'm like congested, so I can barely breathe. Floyd woke up with a nasty cough, so <laughs> that's fun. down for his nap. He'll probably sleep for about two hours. And so I thought I would just start doing laps. I'm going to walk around and around and around to try to get my labor to progress now that I'm here. Okay, actually I need to put the camera down. So I'm going to try to stay out of the tub until I'm in more of like a, that active labor stage. Let me walk you through my second home birth. Because the second time around, I will say, you forget a lot from the first time. I found it to be true that the second time around is so much faster. My bestie was here from the mainland, staying on the island for a few weeks, which worked out perfectly. You can hear little tiny baby hiccups. She was the one who filmed my entire birth for me, which was so exciting because I have all of this amazing footage, which I did not have my first home birth. So I was snacking, I was eating, and I was doing laps around the kitchen island. Around four o'clock, I started feeling like my contractions were getting intense enough to where I wasn't talking during my contractions. I expected to get to a point where I wouldn't be able to function at all, like a blackout point, because my first labor around four o'clock, that's what happened. And so Chad called the midwife both times around 4 p.m. She got there probably by 4.30. Like she was there really quick. 
and things were like progressing. My labor was progressing. My contractions were getting stronger. had started to notice that just leaning over the counter wasn't what my body wanted at that point anymore. I needed to start like bearing down. And so I was more in the bathroom because the bathroom counter was lower. And then that's also when I kind of got Chad to help me. I was hanging on to him and he was like holding me. Oh, he's so amazing. He's so helpful. It might not seem to him like those things are really helpful, but I don't know how, what I would do if he wasn't there for me during those moments. I don't know how I would get through every single contraction if he wasn't literally... It's like he was like my anchor to life in those moments. It's really important that I have his support for that, physically, mentally, emotionally. Around 5.30, I started noticing that when I would bear down, I would stand over a wet pad and there would be like some liquid there. So my midwife tested it to see if it was in fact my waters because my water had not broken yet. And so she said that by testing, I think she used like a little test strip and if it turns blue, it is amniotic fluid. And so it did. And she said my waters were leaking which was the same thing that happened to me during my first labor. And with Floyd, I did decide to break my waters because I was in labor for so long and I just wanted to progress and keep going. So the second time when she told me that the same thing was happening again, I was undecided because I really wanted zero intervention at all. But knowing that I had already done that my first labor and I didn't have any negative side effects and it did in fact progress my labor quite quickly after she broke my waters the first time. I just decided to do it again. So at six o'clock my bestie went with Floyd to go pick up some dinner. I think at like 6 25 when they were walking back in the door we were breaking my water. I got my midwife to fill up the bathtub well, my girlfriend and Floyd were out getting dinner, so the tub was ready for me to get in as soon as we broke my water because I already knew that when we would break my waters, I'd want to get in there. And I was not wrong. My midwife suggests to have your water broken while you're in a contraction because it's like pushing down on what she says feels like a balloon. And so that's never fun. It's not like extraordinarily painful. It's just kind of uncomfortable because you have to lay flat on your back on the ground and have a contraction. And I, I liked to, to bear down and hang on to Chad. So that was a little bit just uncomfortable. Instantly second contraction came right away and I got in the tub. When I got in the tub, it was 6.25. And at this point, I started to really, really focus on my breathing. I had been practicing my breathing techniques for three months solid before birth, because I knew from the first time that my breath was the only thing that got me through all of the moments of childbirth. And so I found that my breath came to me effortlessly this labor. I didn't even think about it. I didn't have to try. I didn't get lost in my contractions. I was just breathing in for four and out for six, but I wouldn't even count it because my body had already practiced that breathing technique for so long that I could feel what the amount of time for four seconds is and the amount of time for six. Just breathe out longer than you breathe in pretty much. It's amazing 
what mindset and breath work can do for you. So when I was in the tub, I did start to notice I was grabbing on to Chad, but I had heard about that comb trick so many times from so many people. So I did have some combs with me and I thought I would give it a try. So I put a comb in my right hand. I don't know if it would actually help with like the pain. It was like more of like my hand needed to grab something. And so grabbing the comb was really helpful. I'll never forget the moment. There was two moments actually. Chad said, it's a girl. And I was still so much like in my zone. I hadn't even opened my eyes yet. And when Chad said, he was right here and he said, it's a girl. And I was like, oh. and I just like, couldn't even like bring myself to open my eyes yet. I was still like in my own little world. But the moment that I did open my eyes, I will never forget. I looked over and there was Floyd standing right here and Chad was right here and he put his arm out and he said, you're okay, mommy. You're okay, mommy. And I was just like, oh my heart, like I want so many babies. It was just such a beautiful moment to have my two-year-old there with me. I am so glad that he was. Maybe I had heard that, you know, the second time baby just comes flying out. So I took that pretty literal in hopes that that's exactly what happened. And in some ways, yes. From the moment we broke my water to the moment baby arrived was 44 minutes. What I didn't anticipate was the flashbacks I got from my previous labor while I was in labor. Whenever I give birth, I give it two days. That is it. Like three and I'm and I forget the pain of childbirth. And it's all so worth it, which it is, of course. And I think like, oh I could do that again. But in the moment when I was in the tub and the contractions got to that point and then the pushing started, it was like all of these memories of how much it hurt came rushing back to me and I was like, oh my God, oh yeah, I remember this. This 
is really painful. This actually is the most painful thing I've experienced in my life. And this sucks. And it's like you just forget. So like it was weird to be experiencing it the second time. Before that point, I was like, oh, it's not that bad. It doesn't last that long. It's all so worth it, which is all true until you're in the moment and you're going through it and you realize, yeah, that's like something I've never ever felt in any other way, shape or form before. That is the only time it feels like that in my body. With Floyd, I pushed for about 30 minutes. And with this baby, I pushed for like 10, 15 minutes. It's not less painful the second time, it's quicker. My midwife said she could tell I was breathing my baby out and I would describe it like that. This time it wasn't like rushed, oh my God, panicky, get them out pushing feeling. This was more of like, I know this feeling, I recognize this feeling, it, my body is doing what it's supposed to do. I know it won't last too long. And so I really just, took good deep breaths and and turned everything off around me and really listened to my body. My body literally told me how to get my baby out. Not necessarily push when there's just pushing when there is a contraction, but the amount of pushing per amount of contraction kind of if that makes sense and the in between like using my breath to keep baby down low keep baby coming out so baby doesn't go up or down wild yeah it was really cool i just want to touch on the having your older children present during labor or birth for a minute i'll make probably a whole video on this where i go into it more he surprised me he was so calm so gentle very observant and it was such a beautiful moment to have him be a part of it, to be a part of everything. He helped Chad cut the cord with the baby. So when we said, do you want to cut Floyd? Do you want to use the scissors? He like jumps up on the bed like, yeah, what do I get to do? And it was so beautiful to have that moment where he's just so included and so involved. Uh -huh. Daddy, put your hand on here. Let's twist him. Right there. Oh, nice work for him. Perfect, John. You did I gave birth to my daughter, Frances Cozeries, on December 19th at 7.08 p.m. She weighed seven pounds, eight ounces, one ounce different than my son, and they look so much alike, it's adorable. Sometimes I'm looking down at her and I still see him, and it reminds me of how small he was. To truly cherish these moments because they're so fleeting. My little Franny. Thanks for watching. I love sharing my birth story because I just really hope to inspire you to believe in your body, trust your body, trust your baby, trust yourself and your own intuition. You don't need any medical professionals to tell you how your body works. You can do it. it you can literally do it. I've had friends be like, I don't know how you do it. I could never do that. But but I want you to know that you can. It's all about a mindset and you are the only one in control of your own mind. I believe in you. Thanks for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great rest of your day. We'll have a great rest of our day and we'll see you in the next video. A day in the life of a newborn and a toddler. And thank God daddy's on paternity leave. Catch you later guys.